Let's talk about Sweet Sixteen, the ultimate banjo intro for an Irish ballad. If you haven't already seen it, I have a dedicated video showing you how to play the intro to Sweet Sixteen. Check out the link. In this video, we're going to talk about picking the chords to accompany the song. The picking is quite, can be quite complicated and you can get into syncopated cross rhythms and stuff, which does add an awful lot more texture and interest. But for the purposes of getting the basic chords down, because there's a good bit of jumping around on the fingerboard, we're just going to use this simple cross pick pattern. <laughs> It's basically down, up, up, up. We're going to cross all four strings. And for this, we're going to, as much as possible, drone on the bottom string and move around. Part of the harmonic interest with playing the chords to this tune is that the bass kind of leads where the chords are going. Starting off, just become comfortable with the four string cross. So we're going to play quite loosely with the strict nature of the chords, just so that we can keep the cross picking consistent. So it goes from a G to a G7. The best way to do this really on a banjo is just to play the G and then drop the top note down to an F sharp. What that achieves is the movement of the chord from the G to the E minor. If you want access to the chord charts and all of the notation for this song, and you like other exclusive stuff, then get over onto my Patreon page, Endoscahal Banjo. Link is in the description and in the pinned comment. Now for consistency of picking, we are going to play the open G with the E minor. It kind of fits in, it's not perfect. You could bar in the in the B if you wanted to. But it's just, it's a little bit too much jumping around and what we would like to get is kind of a consistency of, of the harmonics as much as anything. Now when you get to the C with the traveling B note, that's a little bit more work in this. What we're trying to capture is this movement. those notes. And the easiest way to do that for me certainly is to use my thumb for that low A. Now there are a couple of chords which um, we're not going to use all four strings on and so there's a few D, D chords and we're just going to double on the D string. If we stick with the down up 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 pattern it means our right hand is doing the same thing all the time. There are some D chords where I will play the low A with my thumb and a high D on top. And that's just again, it's to keep the finger pattern as easy as possible. The idea really is that you're not jumping off a ton because you do want to keep the resonance happening through it as much as possible and you want to keep those little uh, chord movements. and it's uh, very easy to read in the tab format I think as much as anything for this one. Tuning GDAE. If the picking is too much you could of course uh, strum it out.
that's an even simpler version. And that might actually help you to get your head around the, the card shapes and then add in the, add in the cross picking. <laughs>